Hi guys, Sport Tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Welcome to the another edition of Kotlin Fundamentals series. One of the common thing that you learn in any programming language while working with loops is break and continue. Probably you are already aware of how to return from a method or a function using a return statement. These are very common keywords that you would have already been familiar with. We will once again have a relook at these because there are certain nuances in Kotlin which might be unique to you. For example, this is how a typical for loop, a nested for loop would look like and the output would be something like this. There is nothing new here. You are already probably familiar with it. And in case if I modify this loop with the break statement here, the output would be something like this because if j equals to 2, then we are basically breaking the loop. And when we break the loop, we break the current loop in which we have written the break statement that is the inner loop. But what if we want to break the outer loop? Well, in Kotlin, this can be achieved using the concept of labels. So let's go through some demos to understand how to use this. Well, I have written a simple code here. This contains a for loop and just to ensure that everything is working, let me run this to see that what is the output, the current output here. And as you can see here, it is just printing all the i's and j's. And what I can do is I can write if j equals to two, then probably break. And now if I run this, you see the j values only going till 1 and i values going to 1, 2 and 3. But what if I want to end the outer loop? Well, for that, what you can do is you can give the label for the loop. Now, how do I give a label? Let me call the outer loop as outer loop and then put the at and the inner loop as inner loop with at. And basically now what I have done is I have given a label to both of these loops and then what I can do is here I can write break at outer loop and now when I do this and run it what exactly is happening is the outer loop is being broken not the inner loop. If you provide the inner loop label it will still behave in the same way as the default break statement without any label that is this statement with the label for the inner loop and without any label is one and the same because we are basically breaking inner loop in both of the cases. You will see the major difference when you actually use the label for the outer loop. So this is something unique probably you see in Kotlin. There is a, another keyword that you should be aware that is return. Well, return is basically used to return from a function. But here we will be basically looking at one of the common usage of returning from a inline function. I have not talked about inline functions, lambdas as of now, but I just want to demonstrate it quickly. For example, let me create a list of numbers. I can create that using this statement. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then for each of these elements in the list, I can use for each and then print the number. The number is basically represented through it. Anyhow, I will be going through these things in a much more detailed manner when I discuss about lambdas and inline functions and for each map different kind of functions a bit later. But let me run this and see what is the output. So what it basically does is it just prints the values. But what if we don't want to print if it is say 3. See this is not a loop. We cannot use a break here. So that is where you have to use return. So what I will do is I will write a if it equals to 3 then you can see that the auto suggestion provides two options one is return let me do that and see what is the output so as soon as it reaches 3 it breaks the for each but what if i want to only skip 3 and continue the remaining things so what you can do is return for each and let me run this again now you can see that only 3 is skipped and the remaining things are being continued so I am basically using the label of the for each inline function itself or you can even give a name for it. Say for example for each say 
sample and I can use this label here and it will still work in the same fashion. There are few more finer nuances of how to use this return statement in an inline function, anonymous function, those kind of stuff. Since I have not covered those things, even if I explain them now, probably you may not get it right now. So when I cover those topics, I will once again visit this topic again. So that's it as of now. I will see you in the next video pretty soon. Stay tuned. That brings us to the end of this particular video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.